Hallelujah. So good to be here again. Um, it's uh, really an honor and privilege to be with every one of you tonight. Um, how many of you believe that God is going to do something in your life tonight? You believe that? I believe every time we come to the presence of God, God is about to do something for us. Amen. Amen. Uh, that we read in the book of Matthew, right? That those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. When we really hunger and thirst after God, God will fill us. Amen. God always wants to fill us. God always wants to come through for us. God always wants to meet us at the point of our need. So I believe tonight God will do that. Amen. Amen. Maybe I would like to worship a little bit. Is that okay? Just close our eyes and worship God for a few moments.
Healing rain is falling down Healing rain is falling down Come and visit us tonight, God Healing rain is falling down Oh, Ramana Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm about Jesus that the God we worship the King of Kings the Lord of Lords the one who's the Alpha the Omega the beginning the end the first and the last he's the line of Judah the lily of the valley the bright and morning star the rose of Sharon the balm of Gilead the one who was and is and is to come Tell him, Lord, tonight I want to meet with you, God. I want you to touch me. I want you to have your way in me, God. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I am thirsty for at your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. Lord, I'm hungry for a move of God. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Lord, I'm thirsty for at your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me, Lord, I'm hungry 
far removed of God. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. and worship Him. Forget about everything this evening. Tonight is just between you and God. How we love you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. Give you adoration, Holy Spirit. Come and move in our midst tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We honor you, we honor you tonight, God. Oh, Rabbana, presence of God will drive every dryness out of our lives probably you're tired in your soul but the Bible says like this times of refreshing they come from the presence of the Lord tonight God wants to refresh us Hallelujah, we honor you, Jesus. Honor you, honor you, God. Move in this place with all your glory and your splendor, God. worship God. <laughs> Amen. I really love to worship God. Um, we can worship and worship and worship and worship. Amen. There's nothing like the presence of God. Hallelujah. You know the God we worship is a God of breakthroughs. Amen. God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Just when we think it's impossible that's when God makes things possible. That's why He is God. Amen. Amen. He will come through to us uh, exactly at the point of our need. You know, sometimes we can be very challenged with so many things in our lives. But God will always come through. Amen. Do I need this? Or can, can we leave it off? Is it okay if I stand here? Amen. God will always come through for us exactly at the point of our need. Okay. Um, I always think about the life of Moses because, uh, you know, it was um, uh, 
the life of Moses was an amazing life. Every time I read about him, every time I think about him, I'm very challenged. You know, we all know 40 years Moses was in the palace, right? He lived a very royal life, uh, rode the finest of horses, probably traveled the best of chariots, ate the finest of foods, uh, lived as a prince, lived in style, you know, in his day. And uh, that was for 40 years. Uh, Well-educated, uh, was a great administrator, was a great person. But 40 years later, one event in his life changed everything, right? He tried to find uh, peace between an Egyptian and a Hebrew. Ended up that, you know, he killed uh, the Egyptian and immediately knew what would happen to him. Okay, he knew the rules of the game. He knew what, would, uh, what Pharaoh would do to him. He knew Pharaoh would kill him. Uh, you know, that, uh, and he knew the power and the administrative abilities of the nation. And so he fled. He fled Egypt. Egypt was the place he was supposed to be. Okay. He uh, tried to do something for the Hebrews. It didn't work out. He tried his best, but eventually ended up uh, running away far from the destiny that God had for him. Have you felt that? Sometimes suddenly... Because of one situation or because of one thing, sometimes we, you know, end up going away from what God has for us. Sometimes we try to work things out. You know, we know what God wants in our life and we try to work it out in our own flesh. And we ended up more messed in life than we were before we tried to do something. Have you felt that? That's exactly what Moses felt. I've been through that path many times myself. Very challenging, out in the wilderness. And how long was he in the wilderness? For 40 years. Okay? 40 years of emptiness, 40 years of desert, 40 years of uh, taking care of sheep. The man who was riding the finest of horses and, uh, you know, the best of chariots ended up taking sheep out for pasture every, probably every day. Uh, you know, as a simple shepherd. And uh, that was his life. One day, two days, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, one year, two years. Ended up for 40 years. Okay? Felt that his life was of no use. What to expect in life when you're 80 and you feel you've come to the end of it. You've come to a point in life where you don't know what good can come out of my life. Have you felt that? Have you felt in places and times where you feel, what more? Have you felt, I've got something more to give, but I don't know what to do. I've been, you know, I'm in such a situation where, this is it. Lord, is this where you want me to be? That's exactly how I felt. You know, in 2007, I still remember, um, I was so traveling uh, I, I was traveling and preaching. I was a pastor from 98. I've been a pastor. Uh, I had been traveling to different nations, preaching and so many things. But I knew in my heart that there was something more to my life than what I was doing. I knew that my life was about something else. Not just being, you know, I had a business. I was, uh, you know... Uh, uh, an associate pastor with another senior pastor and some, some of us were associate pastors. Ministry was good, everything was good, but I knew deep in my heart that there was something more to my life than what is happening right now. Have you felt that? I felt it. I felt it. It was painful. It was difficult. Yes, there was money because of the business. Yes, there was you know, whatever you could get in that day, you know, you got everything. Everything was fine. Family was fine. Everything was fine. But deep on the inside, I was so broken. I was so crushed. I was so, I knew in my heart there was something more to my life than what was going on around me. Have you felt that? Everything is good. Everything is nice. But you know that there is something more in your life that you're not doing. That's exactly how I felt. Probably that's how Moses felt. Okay. Until 
um, you know, I, I, began to, I began to come to that place. I thought, okay, maybe all those prophecies and everything, you know, maybe they're just words to encourage and, you know, excite you. But I don't know how it's ever going to happen. Do you know something? We are a people of our words. Isn't it true? When we say something, uh, why do we do what we do? Because of what we said. If you tell, told somebody you're going to be there to visit them or to meet them, just because you said it, you do what you have said. Okay? We are a people of our words. We are judged by our words. Uh, you know, our character is, uh, you know, uh, is in place because of what we say and do. And we keep our words because that's what we are respected for. Let me tell you something. How much more God? Do you know that God is behind his words? If he says that he will do something, he will do it. God never says something and does another thing. God is always behind his word. Amen. amen. The promises of God are a and amen in Christ Jesus. God fulfills what he says he will do in our lives. Amen. So I, uh, I knew that, but I was going through a lot of challenges. Until I think it was between 2003 or maybe 2004 and 2007, about three years. I was very dry years of very challenging times. Of course, ministry was good. I was preaching, you know. I was doing everything. But I knew that something more was there in my life. I even sat in my office many days and, you know, detested the work that I was doing. You know, I would get calls on the business. Something will come up and I would say, God, this is not what my life is about. This is not what it is. Until I remember in 2007, a dear friend of mine, you know, he said one day, he said, um, he said, there's a preacher who's come to Chennai and, you know, he had a weekend of meetings and he said, let's go. They have a Thanksgiving meeting. So he said, would you come and play the guitar? Let's go. I'm, let's go and lead worship. So he went. I still remember this preacher spoke that evening about Joseph and his dreams. Okay? And then he said this. I don't know all that he preached that day. I don't remember everything. There's one thing I remember that he said. He said, God has a dream for you. Heaven is waiting for that dream to be fulfilled in your life. And there are many that are waiting on the other side to be blessed. When that dream comes to fulfillment in your life. I tell you, those words hit me so hard. I think it was around February of 2007. It hit me so hard. God has a dream for you. Heaven is waiting for that dream to be fulfilled in your life. And there are many waiting on the other side of the dream, waiting to be blessed when this dream comes to fulfillment. Many lives will be touched are waiting, waiting for the day that this dream will come to fulfillment. That night, I still remember driving back home. Those words had a deep impact in my heart. I went back to the Lord. I began to cry out to God. I became desperate. I told the Lord, Lord, I need something to happen to me. I need something to happen to me. It was a place of desperation. I want to ask you this after this evening, how desperate are you for God in your life? Is he just one of the agendas of the day or is he the agenda of life? What does he mean to you? Is he just one of the things that you do in your day or is your life about him? You know, many times we try to make God appropriate to our lifestyle, not realizing we need to make ourselves appropriate to God and his word. One of the biggest challenges of society is that, you know, we times change, seasons change, people change, the world changes, everything changes. Amen? The only one that is constant is God. God and his word does not change. It will never change. Seasons will change. People will change. Everything will change. But God and his word 
will never change. Never change. And if we are a people that will make adjustments to our own life in such a way that we can follow after God and his word, then our lives will be different. And the only way that will happen is when we have an encounter with God. Anybody you take in the Bible, anybody that God used, anybody that had a mighty ministry or a work or a, whatever the, you, they have done, men and women of God in the Bible are people who had an encounter with God. 40 years in the wilderness, everything was dry. I was so dry. I, I have tasted God. I have had encounters with God. I had, you know, I had a wonderful ministry going. I had a lo lot of things happening. But I knew I needed something more. I knew my life was not about just surviving and doing these things. It was something more. I knew that I had come to a place where my life was stagnant. You know? I knew that there was something more. I needed to go to the next level. Have you felt that sometimes? I, in my spiritual life, I need to go to the next level. I need to go up. I need to grow up. I need to know what to do next. How to take my ministry up to the next level. What is it that needs to be done? Sometimes we come to a place where we are stuck. You know, we try administrative you know, uh, ways, we try intelligent ways, we try to follow different models, we try all kinds of things, nothing works. Because in the kingdom of God, only one thing works. What is it? God having his way in us. So like every other day, Moses went and, uh, you know, was taking care of sheep. And we all know what happened, right? Heard, you know, he saw a burning bush. He went close to it. He heard the voice of God. Remove your sandals for the place where you stand is holy ground. One of the first things God wants from our lives is the willingness to step out of our way into his way. Amen. We're all used to our own ways. What? The first thing that God looks for us is that we step out. We're willing Willing for a change. I was in Faroe Islands some months ago and I was in this church. Um, and you know, it was so amazing. Just a small church with few people. But this time when I went into that church in a small island, I suddenly found that the, you know, the music equipment and the worship team and everything were on one side. And the people were around. It was very strange. Normally, you know, the, the, the pulpit, the pulpit was up there and uh, they had removed everything. They put all the equipment on one side and the chairs on the other side. And they were worshipping God. And as I was standing there, the Lord told me, you know why they've done that? Because they've told, the, they've told me, God, we want a change. And we want to start by telling you what is the change we want. We're just even moving our altar just to let you know we want to go into the next level. And I never knew about it. That's what the Lord told me. But eventually when I spoke to the pastor, that's exactly why they even turned. They said, Lord, we need something's got to happen in this place. We want more of you. That evening, the power of God hit that place. People were all over the floor shaking under the power of God. I want to tell you something. God is a God who visits us. First thing he told Moses was, remove your sandals. The place where you stand is holy ground. You see, the minute Moses stepped into the presence of God, the minute he stepped under the mighty anointing of God, the visitation of God, in a moment, he understood what his life was all about. Do you know, my friend, it's the presence of God. It's the visitation of God. It's the precious outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us that will first make us understand what our life is all about. If you want to see who you are, if you want to see what your life is all about, what is the worth of your life, what is your future, what is it that you need to live for, what is the direction of your life, you need to come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 49, Jesus told the disciples, 
go and tarry in Jerusalem till you are endured with power from on high. In John chapter 14, Jesus said from verse 14, he said, I will pray to the Father that he will send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. Okay? And then in John 16, from verse 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go, the helper will not come. But when he comes, verse 8, he will convict you of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. What will be the prompting deep within us about sin, about righteousness? The word righteousness means a right standing with God. What will push me? What will urge me to walk in a right standing with God? Telling me deep on the inside, hey, you know what? You can't do this. Or you can do this. Do this. Move this way. Get to do this. Get to start reading the word. Get to do this. That prompting of the Holy Spirit will only be there when we step under the presence of God. Without the Spirit of God, we will not even know how and what to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you read verse 9, Paul says, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. The Bible says, it, our eyes have not seen. We have no revelation of what is before us. We can't see. Our ears have not heard, nor has it entered into our heart, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10, the Bible says, however, they are revealed to us by His Spirit. Who reveals? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who opens our eyes of understanding. You remember in Ephesians chapter 1, if you read from verse 17, Paul writes like this. He says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know the hope of His calling, that you will know the inheritance that is in the saints. That you will know the working of his mighty power. He's talking, he's saying, I'm praying that your eyes will be open. He says a Christian life is not about knowledge, it's about revelation. Are you with me tonight? If you want to walk your Christian life, if you want to walk after God, that happens by revelation. That's not by knowledge. You cannot put two and two together. You need to go by what the Lord is speaking to you. Amen? We read scripture. What brings life? As we read the scripture, there are rhema words that come out. God, suddenly there's a verse that leaps out to you. There's something that God is ministering to you. That is what will turn your life around. Even this evening as I talk to you, what the spirit of God is nudging in your heart as I speak, those are the words that will bear fruit in your life. That is the change. When somebody talked to us about Jesus, we felt that nudge on the inside. Yes, I need this Jesus. That's what brought the, brought the salvation. That's what turns your life and my life around. Let me tell you, if you need to step into what God has for you, you need to be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. There needs to be a revelation. Without vision, people perish. God said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. Write what? Write the vision. You need to write the vision. What is the vision? Vision is what supernaturally God shows you. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, if you read from verse 6, when Samuel went to Saul, he looked at Saul and said, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, in verse 6, he said, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will begin to prophesy. That's not about something that you can do on your own. That's when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're, you, are, you, know, so you step out of the natural into the supernatural. You suddenly begin to have eyes to see what God is doing. You have ears to hear what God is speaking. Then you begin to speak out what you are seeing in the spiritual and what you are hearing in the spiritual. Are you with me tonight, church? Christian life is about revelation. Christian life is about seeing what God is doing. In 2018, if you need to walk the walk that God has called you to walk, you need to walk by revelation. Moses heard the voice of God. The voice of God began to do something to him. The minute he had a revelation, the minute he heard the voice of God, the minute he stepped out of the natural into the spiritual, something happened. What happened? He understood what his life was all about. God said to him, 
The tears of my people in Egypt have, re have reached my throne. He says, I want, God said, I want you to go back to Egypt to deliver my people. 400 years of captivity of a nation, their deliverance was dependent on one man's encounter with God. Let me tell you, my friend, in 2018, somebody's deliverance is in your hands. Somebody's change is in your hands. Probably some nation's turn around is in your hands. Maybe they are waiting and waiting till you will have an encounter with God. Till you are willing to say, yes, God, I'm willing to step out of my ways into your ways. I'm willing to step out of the place that I am in into the place that you are in. Not my ways, Lord, your ways. Jesus said in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, Lord, if this cup will pass away from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. What was it that caused the turnaround over the world was one wonderful Savior's prayer in the garden of Gethsemane that said, not my will, God, your will be done. Willing to be broken, willing to be crucified, willing to lay my life, whatever you say, God, even if it takes death on the cross, I'm willing to do it. Jesus said, not my will, your will be done. My friend, I want to ask you, do you live your will or do you want to live the will of your heavenly father? What is it you want to live in your day? God said to Moses, go to Egypt. The Bible says, Moses said, Lord, but how? How will they believe me? God said, put the staff down. The staff turned into a snake. The Bible doesn't talk about this. But I think the minute the, I, 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 just, I just think that when he put the staff and he ran, ran away, he saw the snake and he ran away. Probably, probably, I'm using the word probably. Probably he was reminded of the snake on Pharaoh's throne. He knew the power of Egypt. God said, pick up that snake. It became a staff. God said to Moses, go into Egypt, carry the staff with you. What was God telling him? He said, I have already given you the power over Egypt. Whether it was 10 plagues or 100 plagues, Pharaoh was destined to let the people go. You know why? Because Moses won his victory over Pharaoh, not in Egypt, but at the burning bush. Are you with me, church? You win your victories not by knowing how to fight your enemy, you win your victories because you know how to bow your knees in prayer to God. Your victories are won in your closet, in your quiet time with God. You win the victory over your challenges when you step into the presence of God. When you are saying right in your home, God, come and visit me now. I have an issue, God. I have a situation, God. I want something to happen to my life, God. Where do you win your victory? Not because you know how to fight your enemy, but because you know how to win your victory on your knees in prayer. Moses won over Pharaoh. Do you know, my friend, when Moses left Egypt, Moses was afraid of Pharaoh. When Moses went back to Egypt, Pharaoh was afraid of Moses. Do you know that your enemy actually is supposed to be afraid of you and not you? about your enemy. You are called to defeat the defeat before the defeat defeats you. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Jesus was the problem to all the problems. Problems were not a problem to Jesus, was it? He had problems like you and me. He had challenges every day of his life. But those problems were never a problem to him. He was the problem to the problems. The problems could not overcome him. Are you with me? The sick could not hold their sickness. Death could not hold people. Deafness, dumbness could not hold people when Jesus came. Let me tell you, my friend, you are called to walk as an overcomer. You walk 
because of the mighty power of God over your life. Samuel told Saul, he said, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you'll begin to prophesy. What's the first thing that happens? He said, your eyes will be open to see, your ears will be open to hear, your mouth will be released to speak what God tells you. 1 Samuel 10 and verse 6. That's the first thing. First thing that happens when we have an encounter with God, we move, we are given the privilege to step out of the natural into the spiritual. You begin to understand God. You begin to see God in your day. You begin to see what God is doing in your life. The second thing God said is, uh, Samuel said is, he told Saul, you will be turned into another man. What does the Bible say? You will be turned into another man. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes. We become another person. Not the same person. You become uh, another person. You start thinking different. You start living different. You start acting different. You start doing things different. Many things in your life are different because you're not the old man. You are the new man. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old Things pass away and behold, all things become new. Our life is about being new in Christ. Isaiah 43, if we read from verse 18, the Bible says, Behold, God said to the children of Israel, Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? A new thing. A new thing. When the Spirit of God comes, everything begins to change. We become another person. Moses was another person. After he stepped into the presence of God and had an encounter with God, he was another person. He was not the man who was the prince at one time. He was not the man who was a shepherd at one time. He became a deliverer. You know something? When the Spirit of God comes upon, why we need the anointing, why we need the Holy Spirit, why we need to seek and hunger and thirst after God, why do we need His, need His presence over and over again is because it's the presence of God that transforms us. You see, when the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, she conceived. Isn't that true? The Spirit of God came upon Mary, she conceived. And she brought forth Jesus. What did she bring forth? She brought forth the will of the Heavenly Father. Isn't it? She brought forth the plan of heaven upon the earth. God's will was manifest because the Spirit of God came upon Mary. It's the same with you and me. The Holy Spirit comes upon us. We conceive the plan of God. We conceive the purposes of God. Then it comes out. There is a period of time we are walking in conception. We know God is doing something. Brother, I don't know what, but something is happening to me. I don't know what, but something is happening to me. You see that? And then God's plan begins to work. I still remember I cried out to God. I said, God, I said, first I told the Lord, I said, Lord, what should I do? I know my life is something more. I began to cry out to God for months together. I still remember in the end of 2007, I think around November, the Lord spoke to me and said, go back to every nation I took you. The first word I heard from God. I still remember that year, first place I went was Malaysia. And you know how I went to Malaysia? I was in, in church. That week the Lord spoke to me. He said, go back to every nation. And he said, go to Malaysia. So I just kept it. I never told anyone. That Sunday my pastor came. He came from Malaysia. He was in Malaysia at that time. So he came. That Sunday he was in church. 
So Sunday morning, a lot of people visited, you know, after the service met him. And I ran away. I didn't uh, go and see him. Sunday evening, again, a lot of people said hello to him and all that. And I was there, you know, leading worship and doing things. And then I was walking down the corridor. He called me. He said, Steve, come here. Came to me and said, Ma, Malaysia he just came to me. He said, Jesus told you to go to Malaysia, isn't it, last week? I said, yes, pastor. After he told you, he told me, ma. And he said, as soon as you go, send him. So, this week you go. I said, no, pastor, but I have to apply for... No, ma, you come and see me in the office. I went and met him the next day in the office. He simply told me, when Jesus says go, you know what it means? Go. And he picked up the phone, called a pastor in Malaysia and said, this Sunday, my pastor is coming and he will preach in your church. His name is Pastor Stephen. Okay? 10 o'clock, he'll be in your church. And he put the phone down. And he said, Ma, next Sunday you're preaching there. I said, Pastor, I have to apply for a visa. Ah, that's no problem. Just go and give it to the travel agent. Three days, your visa will come. Friday, you take a flight and go. Saturday, rest. Sunday, preaching. But I said, Pastor, but I, you know, there's so many things. He said, everything will stop, you go. Because Jesus said, go. And I can tell you, everything changed after that trip. Everything changed. Everything changed. Within the next one or two years, I began to see God was opening doors all across the nations. Nations. In one year, I was traveling to more than 10 nations. Just like that. It cannot happen if you plan. Are you with me? You can't plan things like that. Somebody looked at me and said, hey, I, I work as the vice president of a company. And he says, you know, for us, if I have to travel, there's so many things to plan. How do you travel? I said, I don't know. It's God. He simply took over my life. Let me tell you something. God has a plan for you. The reason I'm sharing tonight is because God has a purpose over your life. You don't live to survive. You live to declare the glory of God. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. We don't live to survive. That's what the people in the world do. They're just surviving. They're just living. Living day in, day out, day in, day out. And then one fine day, everybody's got to die. And we all know that. Right? In the world, some people can become rich. Some people may not become rich. Some people can make it great. Some people cannot make it great. But there's one thing. That every man who is born needs to face is death. Nobody can escape that. Right? We have a life. That life is called eternal life. God given eternal life. We don't live to survive. We live to declare the glory of God. That happens... Because of God's visitation over our lives. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit comes. Everything will begin to change. Tonight he's going to come in this place. Amen. Because he's here. Amen? Let me tell you something. God loves us even more than we can love ourselves. God cares for us even more than we can care for ourselves. God is more concerned about us than we can be concerned about ourselves. He was so concerned about us that even before we were born, he already, through Christ Jesus, provided salvation for you and me. That one day we will be with him in heaven forever and ever. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Isn't God good? God loves us so much that he gives us salvation that we might be with him forever and ever. And I want to tell you tonight, if you're hungry, in Mark chapter 7, if you read from verse 37, the Bible says like this. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Okay? Mark, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John 7. I'm sorry, John 7. John 7, 37. Now, John 7 verse 2 talks about what that feast was. It's called the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? So, Jesus went to visit the feast. John 7, 37, the Bible says, On that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus cried out with a loud voice 
and he said what did he do he cried out with a he cried out with a why because he wanted to draw the attention of people right he was shouting because he wanted to grab the attention of people and what did he tell the people he said if any man is thirsty let him come to me and drink amen he said not he didn't say everybody come here i'm going to give you a drink did he say that he said no he said if any man is thirsty it's so sad jesus had to shout and scream because the people were so interested in celebrating the feast they did not recognize the god of the feast had come to the feast he was there the very god of this evening service is here are you with me he said where two or three are gathered in my name there am i in the he's more real in this room than you and i he's here and why is he here because he wants to reach out and touch us christian life is not just about words it's about an experience we experience god god moves in the midst of us amen tonight he will move if you're hungry for god he will touch you if you want god to have his way in you he will right now touch you tonight right in this place god will visit us god will touch us and the touch of god is about a change touch of god is about a new life touch of god is about a god life that comes to us it just happens one moment one touch of the holy spirit and never be the same again just one visitation of god never be the same again tonight right in this place god will come through for us if we are hungry jesus said if any man is thirsty let him come to me and drink for out of him will flow rivers of living water amen god wants living water to flow out of you and me i told the lord in my younger days i used to tell the lord lord You know, every time I read the Bible, I'm so excited, you know. I'm so excited about the life of Paul, the life of Peter, the light of, life of the, the prophets and, the, you know, the way you visited them, you talked to them, you did things and, you know, Elisha, you know, just doing miracles. And I said, Lord, all this is very interesting. But aren't you the same? If you could do it in the life of Elisha, can you do it in my own life? to do it in the life of this man can you not do it in my life if saul can have an encounter on the road to damascus why can't i have an encounter with you i used to tell the lord lord i want to be there i want to be there i don't want to lord just be talking about somebody i want to live that somebody if you can do it for them you can do it for me I want to experience what Moses experienced. I want to experience what the people in the Bible experienced. God, I want to walk with you. I began to be hungry, hungry, hungry until God began to visit me. God would visit me. Everything will change. God will come. Listen. It's the same God. He doesn't change. Amen. Amen. tonight if you are hungry for god god will visit us tonight let me tell you something he knows what we need he knows what to do he knows what our situations are he knows our sicknesses he knows our challenges we have seen many people get healed even without praying for healing just in the presence of god people just get healed delivered last week a couple of days ago i was in a meeting a few days ago the power of god came into the place somebody was bound in one moment the power of god hit them a deliver just like that just like that god is a god who meets us when he comes everything will change tonight he'll come through for you and me amen i'm not i believe god brought me here with a purpose 
this is not about my preaching this is about god loving you are you with me Amen. this is not about a good meeting that's not what it's about this is about a god encounter tonight god will have an encounter with you just close your eyes for one moment Just open up to God tonight. Let's feel free in the presence of God. I don't know what your situation is, but you know what your situation is. May, probably you are in a situation, you know, this, I don't know why God is showing me again and again. There are some of you in your, in your life, you're in a time in your life, you're saying, God, something's got to happen to me now. Something has happened. to happen to me now i am in this place in this in this stage of my life for a long time i've been here for a long time i'm in the same situation for a long time something's got to happen to me And the Lord is saying to you tonight, come to me. I'm ready to draw out of you that which I have put within you. God is saying to you, I'm ready to draw out of you what I have purposed in your life. Hey, Ramana, Dora, Robo, Shindaraba. Pray, Ba, Mama, Mama, Mama. Just begin to pray. This is a very important time. God wants to come through for us. Just forget about everybody. Forget about every person around you. Tonight is a night. You can make this night your night. Just get hungry and tell the Lord, Lord, visit me. 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 Just look at me for one moment. Let me just say this. I feel like saying this. Many, many years ago, I was in a meeting like this. Many years, over, about, over 20, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, sitting in a meeting like this, very hungry for God. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, touch me. Like you touch the people in the Bible, touch me. I want to have a visitation from you. I was so hungry for God. I said, Lord, I don't care how. Touch me. Come through for me, Lord. I want to have an encounter with you. And uh, I was in a meeting like this one evening. And uh, there was a prophet. He came. He prophesied over me. And then he went to the next person. And he prophesied. After he moved away from me, the power of God hit me. I, nobody touched me. I fell down from the ground. On, from the chair on the ground. I was shaking under the power of God. You know how long I was on the floor? I was on the floor for six hours. It was around eight o'clock in the evening. When, you know, it was the meeting. I think it was seven. The meeting started around seven. I don't know. Probably around eight o'clock. The hand of God came upon me. Felt under the power of God. I was on the floor for six hours. I could hear people walking. I can hear people talking. I can. I could hear everything, but I was under the power. I told the Lord, I don't know what this is. At that point, I didn't know. I was very young. And I said, Lord, whatever it is, don't take it out of me. It was the Holy Spirit. I was shaking. I was out of the floor around two in the morning. I couldn't even walk to the room. I was shaking, shaking, shaking. I went to the room. Three days, the presence of God was so strong upon me. I couldn't even talk to people. The only thing that will come down my eyes were tears. I would cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And the only words that I would say is, Lord, my heart is for you. Lord, my life is for you. Lord, my mind is for you. Lord, my everything is for you. Lord, my life is about you. That's all I would say. I would cry, cry and cry. That's all I could do. The presence of God was so strong. I want to tell you, God is real. I was in a meeting in Chennai some years ago. I was out of Chennai near Mahabalipuram. I was about to stand up to go to the platform to preach. That morning, uh, that morning I was, that, 
the, the couple of days I was not feeling well. That morning I went to a, you know, a, to a, uh, some kind of a medical center and I did an ECG because I was feeling very uncomfortable and I think the ECG showed a lot of variations. My cousin is a doctor. She never told me anything about it. I showed it to her. She said, yeah, 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 we'll look at it and, you know, but something was wrong. That evening, I was in a village. We were about to preach. I knew something was not okay with me. Just before getting up to preach, I knew I should not preach. Something will happen to me. So I looked at uh, Gerard. I think some of you know. So I looked at Gerard and said, Gerard, just take the car. Uh, let's go. He said, where, Pastor? I said, uh, I just said, just take the car. I got into the car. I called a local pastor and I told him, you know, you preach and finish the meeting, pack up and come. You know, I've got something urgent. I need to go. He started driving from Mahabalipuram. I said, Gerard, just relax. Don't panic. Just go to Chennai as quickly as you can. I called my, my cousin who's a doctor and I said, this is what I feel. She said, straight go to Kalyani. And she called Kalyani. She set up everything. She said, everybody's waiting for you. Just relax, don't do anything, nothing will happen to you. Half an hour, 15 minutes later, she called me. She said, how do you feel? I said, I'm a little, I feel a little better. She said, okay, are you, are you able to breathe normally? I said, yeah, 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 I'm okay. She said, okay, Triple M. So I rushed to Triple M. We, they drove me all the way to Triple M. They put me on a wheelchair, on a stretcher. They rushed me into uh, emergency and, um, you know, they were putting the all those things for ECG. As they were putting it on, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't want to have a heart problem because I've still not done anything for you. I said, I cannot, I cannot travel. I cannot do what you call me to do if I don't have help. And only you can give me a, you know, only you can heal me. So while they fixed everything and they were about to take the ECG, when he was about to switch the, the machine on, you won't believe. I felt a hand just come and touch my heart like this. I could just feel a hand over my heart. Just one touch. Suddenly, my heart started pumping normally. And they switched the machine on. The doctor rushed in. He took the ECG. He took the morning's ECG and the, the ECG I did that was there in the evening. He said, this is two different people. He said, impossible. To be the same person. I knew it was the hand of God. <coughs> Let me tell you. We've been in meetings where. Paralytic people. Carried into the meeting. Have just got up and walked. Just got up and walked. Let me tell you. Your situations. God can turn it around in one moment. You come under the power of God. You tell God. God have your way in me God. What you find so difficult to change in your life, God will change it in a moment. Those habits that you can't give up, that seem to haunt you in a moment, the presence of God will change. That situation that takes years to change, God will change in a moment. That brokenness within you that nobody knows about, God will heal. That abuse in your life, probably years it has been haunting you. Let me tell you, one touch the Holy Spirit will never be the same. God is in the room tonight. He will have his way. If you will open yourself and just allow him to touch you. Just tell the Lord, Lord, have your way in me, God. Come through for me, God. Just have your way. Touch me, Lord. Lord, heal me, Lord. Have your way in me, Lord. Take over my will, Lord. Open up. Tonight, God will do an awesome work in your life that you will never forget the rest of your life. Just close your eyes for one moment. I'm just going to worship for a few minutes. Then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, open up this time for prayer. Uh, so I just want you to just begin to worship God. And uh, let me tell you, if there's something in your life that needs to be set right before God, just set it right. You know what to do. You know that God forgives. You know that God never condemns. He never condemns us. 
the father never asked the prodigal son where did you go what you did what did you do with my money what did you eat how you wasted my money nothing never asked him anything he only opened his arms and received him let me tell you doesn't matter where you have been what has happened in your life where you have stepped out of the line what has happened if there are things that needs to be set right god's presence is here to set it right tell the lord lord forgive me cleanse me with your precious blood wash me god make me whole just tell him lord i want to come with my heart to you just pray to him just tell him right now right now the presence of god is already in this place god will already begin to minister to your heart what nobody can do for you the holy spirit will do for you what nobody can change the holy spirit will help you he's a helper let me tell you my friend you need help tonight the spirit of god is in this place you need comfort he's called a comforter he will comfort you you want support you need somebody to stand with you there's nobody like the holy spirit nobody like god you know he'll just come and stand with you or reach out and he will touch you touch you touch you 99 sheep he went and put it in its place came back looking for that one sheep he was willing to put his hands into the thorns he was willing to come exactly to where that lamb was pain agony let me tell you he wants to come to you where you are in the situation you are in lift you up carry you put his arms around you hallelujah re banato ro ro bosho let's worship god for a few moments this is a god moment just worship him Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation purchase of love Born of his spirit washed in his blood something tonight
God is in the house. Uh, before I pray with you, I just want you to, you know, just uh, get out of your place, walk around. Uh, if you feel like kneeling down, if you feel like just coming up to the front and the altar, uh, and uh, you know, just want to sit in the front or whatever, just get out of your comfort zone. Uh, show the Lord what you mean tonight by what you do. Take that extra step. Okay? Just, this is God's house. This is our house. For us as God's children, this is house. So I want you to just take take one step out of, out of the place where you are. And, uh, you know, just step out. And, where, you know, if you want to just kneel down, just kneel down. The next few minutes... It's going to, we're just going to spend some time with God. And I want you to, you know, just open up. We, God has spoken to us tonight. Just open up and tell the Lord, Lord, this is what it is. This is what I want. You see, something is so important, you know. Our response. God speaks to us all the time. How we respond. What we say to God. What we are willing to is what is important and when we open up tonight I want you to just open up feel free this is God's house just just get out of the norm and you know just spend some time just next 10 minutes we're going to just spend time with God you know I'm just going to be worshipping but I want you to just get out of your comfort zone step out and you know just begin to pray come before God begin to speak to Him and then if I feel led in my spirit to come to you and pray, then I'll do that. But, but for, the f for the first five minutes, ten minutes, just step out and begin to pray. This is a God moment. Let me tell you, as you begin to pray, listen to what the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you. Listen to what God has to speak to you tonight. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they are known by me. Some of you, your life will never be the same after tonight. I already know God is ministering to your heart. God is ministering to your heart. The hand of God is all over you. Hand of God. Hand of God. Some of you standing here, the hand of God is over you. So just feel free. If you feel like kneeling down, just sitting down. Maybe you want to just sit on the floor. Or maybe sit near the wall and just begin to pray. Just do that tonight. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in us. Have your way. Oh, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, have your way.